outsource everything. I don't have time to do it. And that's not where my expertise lies, okay? I am not an expert clothes washer. I'm not an expert house cleaner. But I want my shit done expertly. So I'm going to just hire the people to do it because that saves my time so that I can do the things that I do at a high level. Welcome to Shades of Content, a show that teaches entrepreneurs how to effectively use content to market their business and stay content while doing it. I'm your host, Patrice, a wife, a mom of three, and a 15-year public relations and marketing professional who decided to open a brick-and-mortar content studio four years ago. And I honestly haven't looked back since. Join me as I share my experiences and the experiences of other entrepreneurs who, like me, are navigating this maze of owning a business, running a family, and trying to stay sane and healthy while doing it. I'll tell you, it's an amazingly challenging journey, but I honestly wouldn't have it any other way. See you soon. Hey guys, I am so excited that we are going to be celebrating year three of this podcast. It's been such an amazing journey. I've learned so much and I've been able to connect with you. But here's what I want for our third birthday. I want to connect even deeper and I want to create a real community. So if you tap the link in the show notes, you can be a part of it by supporting our subscription platform. This is kind of unique because you can support at any level that makes sense for you. $3, $5, $8, $10. And this would be your monthly contribution to not only be a part of the Shades of Content community, but also ensure that Shades of Content exists for the long haul. I've said this in episodes before, as much as I love creating this show, it is quite an investment. It is an investment from my time, my team's time, but it's a huge monetary investment. If we're a community, then we all got to work together to keep this content going. I feel like, you know, I've been doing this for three years consistently providing gems, providing resources, providing insight, providing real talk and experiences. And I kind of just want to formalize it a little bit more again so that our community can continue to grow. So as we celebrate our third birthday on March 19th, I'm so excited. I'm hoping that you can further commit to the show by joining our community. The link is in the show notes. You can join at any level and what comes with it. So you'll get shout outs in episodes. You will get invites to our live episodes we're going to start recording live episodes with people in the audience and only people in our community only you will be able to come to those shows those show tapings they'll be filled with amazing guests food drinks the works and they'll be happening at camp space so yeah you have to be a member of the community to get access to those events again i'll be shouting you out on episodes and then i'm going to roll out a bunch of different things that will only be available to my community the real shades of content crew so thanks for helping us get to year three i'm excited to see what's coming up next tap the link in the show notes to join the community i appreciate you always Happy Friday. Welcome back to Shades of Content. I'm so happy that you are back. Happy St. Patrice's Day. So (laughs) it's St. Patrick's Day, but literally for the last maybe I don't even know how many years, I always tweet happy St. Patrice's Day. So much so that I have one of my really good girlfriends. She even texted me this morning, happy St. Patrice's Day, because just it that's what it is. But I hope this finds you well. It's Friday. We are back with another full episode. I'm your host, Patrice. This is Shades of Content, the show that teaches content marketing hacks, as well as contentment hacks to busy black millennial mompreneurs, because... Yeah, we be doing all the things. And so I hope that this show gives you advice, gives you inspiration. I hope it teaches you something. I hope when you listen to this show, you feel a little less stressed about marketing your business. And then I also hope that you just kind of glean ways that you can find those places of contentment, also known as those places of peaceful happiness. The things that I share in this show are like real life experiences, right? Because as an owner of this space, this content studio that we're in that turns five next week, crazy, I'm learning a lot. Every day I'm learning and sometimes the days are great. Sometimes the days are like, what the fuck? But today feels good. I'm recording. I have a really amazing team with me and I'm excited for this weekend. So you guys, my son turned 16 on Sunday. (laughs) 
I cannot believe I'm about to have a whole 16 year old um, when I leave when y'all as you're listening to this I'm probably running around getting ready for the party that we are hosting tomorrow shout out to Creative Saints Law they are another Hyattsville black woman owned space right around the corner the owner Misha she's my sorority sister she's just a beautiful person Um, her and her wife own the studio around the corner where we are having the party I'm so happy that I can support black businesses as I celebrate my son's 16th birthday so shout out to Misha the link to their business is in the show notes Um, we're having a big party tomorrow this show also turns three on my son's birthday I mentioned that in two episodes ago and I can't believe it I started this show when It was his 13th birthday. That's when the show launched. And now he's turning 16. I interviewed him on the show for episode 99. Um, We did it in our kitchen because we needed to get it done. And I just didn't have everything I needed. So it's on YouTube. Check it out. And he's actually like, my son is, if you're in this room, some of the people that are in here know my son. He is so amazing. We are twins. We literally look just alike. My other two babies look like my husband, but that first one, RJ is all me. He is intelligent. He's so handsome. Like, oh my God. He's tall. He's an athlete. He's always been just very uh, cordial. People will always be like, he's so nice. He's so, he just came over and will start talking to me. Like, he's just a solid dude. And um, I'm just so thankful he's my son. Like, he and I have a bond. I had him when I was 23, young, right out of college. And um, we just have just this bond that I can't even put to words. And I'm so thankful that I had him because he taught me how to be a parent to our other two kids. And he and I have been through a lot together. Like, obviously, not obviously, but me and my husband have three kids. Same dad, same everything. But me and my husband have been separated twice. (laughs) And the first time I think RJ was like three, four. And the second time RJ was like seven, eight. And so there have been times where it was just me and RJ. And yeah, my husband's always been around, but we were separated. So me and RJ was, that was my road dog. So just thinking about the experiences that that kid has just always had my back. Like, even when you and you probably know this, you're 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 a mom. If you're watching this show, there have probably been times where you're like thinking you are screwing up your kids' lives, or you have no idea what's next. And kids are just so resilient; like they just be like, "All right, mom." Like they don't care about all the things that we care about. And I witnessed that in my son. Just like he'd be like, "Whatever, what you want to do." Like, that's literally how he be. I'd be like, let's go to brunch. He'd be like, all right, let's go. Like, he just, he rolls with me, and I literally would take him everywhere. Like, we would be at the cookouts. He one years old. Midnight, he had to cook out with me, dance in the backyard. So, (laughs) so happy birthday, RJ. You are one of my greatest gifts, and I pray that your life is exactly how you want it. You don't have to do what anybody tells you to do. You don't have to follow trends. You can be you. I'm going to support you 100% all the time. I'm going to always go. I'm going to go to bat for you. I've gotten a couple arguments taken up for you, and I always will. But I'm going to also hold you accountable, and we're going to have real conversations. And I can't wait to see who you continue to become. I'm already so proud of you. You are doing things that I've never done, that your dad never did, that nobody in our family ever did. Um, You go to a school that is probably one of the best high schools in the country. And you are in in surroundings that I know at your age, I would not have been able to be in, right? I went to Maryland, an all-white school. And while I had black friends there, I would go into classes feeling so small and shrinking myself. But I see you in spaces similar as a 15-year-old, a 14-year-old, and you command respect. You are you. You've never changed you are you and I I love you for that and I honor you for that and I can't wait to celebrate you and I don't even know if you'll hear this episode because I'll be telling you to listen to my stuff and you don't but it's fine you gonna hear one day (laughs) but I love you kid happy birthday happy 16 and while we celebrate him like I can't believe I've been a mom for 16 years partially because I look 25 okay let me tell you something now (laughs) 
But I've been a mom for 16 years. I have three children. I've carried three humans in this body. They're all in school. They're all doing well. You guys know that my middle baby, my daughter Parker, is on the autism spectrum. Something that I don't think you can ever be prepared for. But I really do believe that I know God gave her to me for that reason, right? Because God knew that I was off some, I'm going to do what I want. I'm going to live my leg, you know. And it's like, no, baby, you take a step back. I'm going to give you this little girl who's going to show you really what love means, what patience means. My daughter is like the most beautiful little girl I've ever seen. I'll be like, yo, who did you come from? She has these green eyes and she's just so pretty and just so spicy. When she was two, I would be like, she's me as I was like, what was I like, 35? She acted like a 35 year old when she was two. It was crazy. And then babe, my baby Reese, he's just this little old man. Reese, man, Reese, wow. He's something else. <laughs> so being a mom for 16 years with three children who are all very different, but all very special. I'm in a space as I'm entering my 40th year of life of finding myself and Really mentally, physically, I'm, I'm, I'm loving the body that I'm in. I'm really paying attention to that financially starting to like, and some of y'all might be like starting girl, you 40, you should have been did that. But Hey, everybody's path is different. It is what it is. But I'm thinking about how I want to live every day of my life. And the great thing is I know exactly who I am and I'm thankful for that. I know what I like. I know what I don't like. I know who I don't want to be around. I also know what I don't know. And I'm on a mission to find that. And um really clear on, I, th- I think I'm clear on what I want things to look like. And I'm committed to making that happen. I don't know if this podcast will be the means to it, but I'm just rolling with it. God is putting some amazing people in my life that I didn't even know a year ago. And um I'm thankful for it. So I went on a super tangent, but when you have a child that turns 16, it makes you a little bit introspective. And so (laughs) I've just been thinking about life and um, just everything. And so I say all that to say, I'm thankful again. Happy birthday, RJ. Let's get into this episode. All right. So this episode is actually really going to talk about contentment. So the last few episodes I've hit on a lot of content marketing things, things that you can do to better market your business, right? We talked about the tips to have a winning content strategy. We talked about why you need to start a podcast. If you didn't see those or hear those episodes, tap the link in the show notes. It's all there. But this one, I want to share some contentment hacks. Again, contentment means your place of peaceful happiness. And I believe, and I know that you absolutely can have contentment when things are crazy. And if you have three kids, And if you're planning a sweet 16 party and you have a child that's on the spectrum and you have a husband and you work a full-time job and life should be up and down. But I, I like to be able to, at the end of the day, just rest in knowing this is what God gave me. And so we're going to move through it. So I compiled a list of 10 contentment and content marketing hacks. It is available now via the link in the show notes, but I'm going to share three of those things with you because I do believe that if you're able to implement these three strategies in your life, you will find contentment a little easier, right? So in the spirit of sharing what I am learning through this process of being a mom of 16 years, owning a business, I'm going to share these three contentment hacks with you. The first one, outsource everything outsource everything. Let me tell you all the things that I outsource. I have my clothes picked up and washed and delivered and folded. I don't wash clothes on a consistent basis anymore because I have these two little humans who have lots of clothes that they get messy. My oldest son washes his own clothes. I haven't washed his clothes in probably about two, three years. And my husband washes his own clothes too, because I'm responsible for these other two humans. So I use a company We put all their dirty clothes in and then they come. I schedule it on the app. They come and pick the clothes up. They drop it off the next day. I also outsource my cleaning. I have a cleaning lady. Now I'll clean up like, you know, we'll vacuum. We'll do the, the, the simple stuff every other day or so. But I have my cleaning lady come to our house once a month and clean the house top to bottom because that is just not something that I have time to do. Just like I don't have time to be sitting and folding clothes. Like that ain't the best use of my time. I use Instacart. There was a time where I would love going to Wegmans and just kind of stroll through the the aisle and pick up things and buy these things, but really not no more. And my husband was really big on this one. I would be like, I need to go to the grocery store. He'd be like, just Instacart it. 
because he sees the value in me not spending two and a half hours going to the grocery store, taking the driving, taking the stuff out, putting it what he sees the value in that. And so now even the days where I put in my calendar grocery shop, I remind myself Instacart. Obviously, some things I like to just pick up myself, but for the most part, we're Instacarting it. So we're outsourcing things. This podcast that you're listening to, I have a team that comes in and does the physical recording and the audio. They load it all to Dropbox or whatever. And then I have a VA in the Philippines. Shout out to Aileen. She just had her 30th birthday like two weeks ago. Hey, girl, I love you, girl. And she's in the Philippines. I was connected through her, through another podcaster, Jasmine, and she's been great. I send everything to, I send the folder to her. At this point, she knows the show so well, I don't even have to give her direction. <laughs> she then edits everything. She clips everything. She create this, creates the graphics. She schedules everything on YouTube and anything that needs to go on social, she puts it in a Dropbox folder and she says, hey, Patrice, everything's loaded and ready by episode. I wanted to talk to you guys quickly about business credit, about how I've been able to use business credit for my business. So I've spent like the last year and a half trying to get my credit up. Like getting in the 700s was really something that was important to me. And I personally was not applying to anything. But I spent a lot of time, again, like two years, two and a half years trying to like raise my credit score and I was very proud of that doing that I was afraid to also apply for business credit so one day I think I might have been talking to my accountant and, I, and he was like just apply for the business credit card Patrice this is not it's not going to hurt you so I did it and I was able to get two business credit cards a Capital One Visa and an American Express Platinum and I didn't realize why people were talking about business credit I didn't realize why people were doing it I kind of just thought it was y'all just trying to get this money but actually these things have been very helpful with me running my business. So the way I do it is I use my Capital One card to pay for all of the businesses monthly expenses, the things that I know I got to pay for. Put it all on the card. At the end of the billing period, I just pay it off. Right. So if you guys have been on the fence about whether or not you want to apply for a business credit card, you do have to have good personal credit. I think sometimes people think they can apply for these business credit cards and it does not factor in your personal credit. It does. They're going to ask for your EIN number, but they're also going to ask for your personal information, which includes your social. So you definitely want to have your ducks in a row and make sure you got your personal stuff together for a higher chance of getting approved. Also, I am not a financial advisor. I'm none of those things. I'm just telling you my personal experience. But if you're on the fence, I would suggest doing it so that it can free up some of your funds, your actual liquid cash, and you can have some more flexibility, right, to do what you need to do. I also feel like, and I know interest rates, again, I'm not the professional. I don't know any of that stuff. Of course, the credit card interest rate is going to be a lot higher than a loan, but loans are really hard to get. And again, if you have a system and a strategy for paying off the debt, you know, you'll be fine. If you're interested in applying to a Capital One card, there are links in the show notes. I don't got nothing to do if you get approved or not. Don't come at me, man. <laughs> this shit don't work out. Not my problem. I'm just giving you the resources. Okay, so I just wanted to make sure I shared that with you all. Again, links to the Capital One business card are in the show notes. Outsource everything. I don't have time to do it. And that's not where my expertise lies, okay? I am not an expert clothes washer. I'm not an expert house cleaner. But I want my shit done expertly. So I'm going to just hire the people to do it because that saves my time so that I can do the things that I do at a high level. So the first tip in having a more content life is to outsource everything. Stop trying to do everything yourself. You're killing yourself trying to do it. And if you don't have the budget for it, I, I bet you you do. You're just not being creative or you're spending money in other places that you could be using for something else. The clothes washing that I use, for example, and I'm not listing them because they're not sponsoring this. Maybe they will hear this, though, and say, mm, we should sponsor that so she can talk about this a little more. They charge by the pound. So typically, I feel like our clothes are maybe like 40 pounds worth of things. That's like a, a human, a child. Like I know my daughter is probably about 40, 50 pounds. And that runs me like $70 every two weeks. Sometimes three weeks, kind of just depending on what. But that gives you an idea of the pricing. For me, our cleaning lady charges us two twenty a month to clean our house. We have a three story house; it's like two thousand square feet, and we have we got kids, we got people, so she, she be having her work cut out for her. But I also, like I said, like to tidy up because I don't like a messy place. So, contentment hack number one: outsource everything. Contentment hack number two, and this is something that I've been doing at least ten years. 
definitely since 2014. So like nine years. Every morning when I wake up, I have a glass of warm water with lemon in it. I buy lemons. I cut it up and I I put my take my mug. I put my water in it. I also keep a gallon of water with me every day. If you know me, you see me. My gallon Yeti is with me every single day. It's literally with me more than my kids are with me. But I fill my I fill my mug up. We have tons of mugs. I put it in the microwave for a minute and forty five seconds. If you do two minutes, it's a little hot. You're not gonna be able to get it, you know, right away. But minute and forty five seconds. Take my lemon, squeeze the lemon in there. Sometimes I'll add a little apple cider vinegar. Sometimes I'll add like an immune booster, immunity booster. I do that every single morning. The first thing that I put in my body is warm water with lemon. It's not coffee. It's not food. It's none of that. It's water. It's it's warm water. And this is really helpful because it helps me. First of all, it helps me relax. It helps my system relax, right? Warm water and lemon help ha, help you have clear skin. Water, you should be drinking a gallon of water every day, right? But I know some people aren't able. <laughs> when I say that, people are like, what? When they see my Yeti, they're like, you drink that every day? I'm like, yeah, for the most part. Skin is clear. Okay, you go on the Instagram page. I don't look 40. I don't look 39, right? I'm 39. I'll be 40 in December. I promise you part of that is because I, I'm drinking water constantly. I'm constantly flushing my body of toxins. It also helps with digestion. This might TM, be TMI, but I poop every morning because the warm water in the lemon helps move your bowels. It helps move things through your system. You should be having a bowel movement every day. If you're not... You got some things you need to clear up in there. You need to be eating more vegetables. But water, I promise you, helps with that. Like when you think about things like a colonic, right? A colonic is literally pushing water through you so that all that junk can come out of you. When you're drinking water, you're using the bathroom all the time. That's your body flushing itself out. That's a good thing. People be like, I got to go to the bathroom all the time. Yeah, that's great. And your, your pee is probably also clear, right? If you got brown pee, if your pee orange, not good. Not good. Your urine should be as close to clear as possible. That means that you are hydrated and you are getting out all the junk. Also, it helps you keep your heart healthy. Black women are dying at at higher rates of heart disease. Um, That's why the things like the Red Dress campaign exists. Lemon water, water helps your heart. It helps keep it healthy. And we need to be doing everything we can. If drinking a, a cup of water or a half a gallon of water every day can help me and stop me from having a heart attack, That's easy. That's so easy. So the second thing for living a more content, peaceful life is having that cup of hot water with lemon every morning. I promise you, y'all, it really does help me kind of. It's the first thing that I do before I wake up. I pray. I go downstairs. I get my water. It's what I do. When I go to a hotel, if I'm staying overnight. They usually have like a tea maker or something. I literally... Have water. I'll call room service. Can you bring me some lemons? That's just, it's just, it's like a part of my lifestyle now. And the third thing that I suggest doing to have a more content life is to share your story and build community. My people are finding me. And when your people find you, you're able to just have really great conversations and really great connections. I had a spa day a couple of weeks ago. And the following morning, I went to the gym at this hotel. When you stay at the hotel, you have access to the spa amenities, which means the sauna, the vitality pool, the heated chairs, like all the things that come into that come with the spa. When you stay at the hotel, you get this. So after I went to the gym that morning, I went to the spa and I sat in the sauna because after I work out, you know, I want to keep sweating. And there was a young woman in there, she's a beautiful woman, and She, I forget how the conversation started, but she said something to me first. And then it was, then we got to Instagram, like, are you on Instagram? Let's follow each other. And it wasn't like a weird, like, because sometimes you can meet somebody and immediately be like, let's follow each other. That was weird. It wasn't like that. We had talked for a little bit before. And when she, when I pulled up her page, she had the autism puzzle emoji. And I was like, you know, are you, do you have a child on the spectrum? And she was like, yes, she had a son who's 17, who's on the spectrum. And I was like, oh, my daughter's on the spectrum too. And I just went into this whole other conversation, but talking about it with someone who knows what I was feeling and who was literally on a momcation by herself to get away from the stresses of life. It was just like, oh wow, my people. And 
had I not, I could have very well saw the puzzle and been like, oh, and not said nothing because I was like afraid or didn't want to say that I also had a child on the spectrum. But I used that opportunity to say, oh, wow, we have a connection. And then we went and talked and I we were in the sauna for maybe 20 minutes and we just talked about so much. And then she sent me something, some event that was happening in D.C. And we're going to keep in touch. Being able to find people or connect with people who get you and can relate to what you're going through. I'm telling you, don't that bring some peace and some happiness because you realize you're not alone. When you talk about depression and we talk about suicide and we talk about these mental things that people we may know are going through, many times people say they felt alone. I felt like I was in this by myself. I felt like nobody understood where I was coming from. I felt like it was just me. But the fact is, you're not alone. You're not alone, but you feel like you're alone because you aren't sharing. You don't have someone that you trust. And that's not always your fault. It's not your fault. It's just that there hasn't been time taken to build that community, to find the people that actually get you. And that's why social media is such a beautiful thing. That's why I don't really, really be feeling bad about being on Instagram because I'm finding people who get me. And that's the beautiful thing about social It gets weird when you start to compare yourself or you start to do all the weird shit that also comes with social media. But when you're able to actually meet people and build community and be inspired by someone else's story or help somebody else. So many people hit me up like, hey, I'm going to Miami and I don't know where to go. I'd be like, oh, girl, go here. Go. I'd be ready. Like do all the things or watch the vlog where I tell you my whole Miami itinerary. Right. Like that's cool for me. Maybe not for you. I'm only talking to, again, my people. So another way to find contentment is to start sharing your story and owning your story and building community around that. And it doesn't have to be 75 million people. It could be four, right? Like just having a tight knit circle of individuals who get where you're coming from, because then you're comfortable sharing the good, sharing the bad. But most importantly, understanding that you are not doing this alone. And I know that there are so many other black millennial mompreneurs who, while they feel or while we feel thankful for the life that we have and thankful that we can build businesses and thankful for our kids and, and, and thankful should be heavy. It's a heavy load that we wear. I also know that God never gives us more than we can handle. And heavy is the crown, baby. When you're wearing that crown, it's a lot. And so to be able to have conversations with people who get it, women who understand, and for you women to hear me saying the things that you probably feel every single day, there's value in that. There's so much value in that. So that's why I'm going to keep sharing my story. Because sitting here in this couch is therapeutic for me. I can get it out. Now, typically, I don't listen to episodes. Once it's, once I get it out, I'm done. I rarely do I replay, rarely do I rewatch it. I just don't do that. I was listening to somebody, a celebrity, who also said that they don't. Oh, not a celebrity, my boss. <laughs> my boss. Um, he's a, a, a pastor of a, a very big mega church, and he was like, yeah, once I preach, I don't watch it. And I was like, me either. So we on the same page, but... But I know that I I at least got it out and it's going to hit who it needs to hit. It's going to help who it needs to help. And maybe one day I will listen back and be like, oh, that was smart, Patrice. That was good. So those are three quick contentment hacks. If you want the other seven, tap the link in the show notes that that you can get your 10 content contentment hacks for mompreneurs. It's a very quick read. It's an ebook. And it's literally things that I do every day. Um, Not every day, maybe not every day, but it is things that I do. I'll tell you the things that I share with y'all here, real life, no fluff. And, you know, take it from me, right? I don't know if you guys have as many kids as I have (laughs) or if you have as many things going on. But when I tell people like my full story, even the lady that I met in the gym, or in the sauna, she was like, what? You have three kids? I'm like, girl, yeah. Sometimes I just be so in it that I forget what my life is. And that's okay, because I don't even see it as a heavy lift. Um, It's what God gave me. I'm thankful for it. This was a super short episode. Y'all are going to get more of these short episodes because I don't think you have to be long-winded to get your point across. I have to get things ready for my son's birthday. 
that I'm throwing tomorrow. Make sure that you are following me on Instagram and TikTok because I'm going to be sharing this party journey there. And um, I hope he enjoys it. I love to, I don't really like planning these parties, but I love doing things for my people. You know, I love putting together parties with my kids. And my sister had a baby last year and we had the gender reveal here. We had a beautiful baby shower at a hotel and it just felt so good to be able to celebrate the people that I love. I love you. If you love this show, make sure you rate and review and share it. This is a quick one. You need to share this with somebody, even if it's not a mompreneur. If you know a mom or a dad that might be a little stressed, that might just need a little pick me up and some quick tips, share this with them. Share it with your mom. Share it with somebody. Again, the link is in the show notes. I hope to connect with you. Thank you so much. And I will see you on Wednesday with a quick hack and then back here on Friday for a full episode. Peace. Happy St. Patrice's Day. All right, now, y'all, don't forget to connect with Shades of Content on Instagram at Shades of Content and with me, Patrice Camo at Patrice Camo. And also be sure to rate this show, leave a review and subscribe because that's actually the only way that we're going to grow. I'll see you next week.